Question from James Krapia from the Oregonian. Uh, Andy, obviously a very talented receiving core and a, a short week to prepare for him. Uh, what does it mean to have a little bit of replenished depth to go about that? And, and how do you go about trying to contain uh, such a deep receiving core? There's no question. Um, very talented inside, outside. Um, a lot of length and speed. And, and so obviously it comes down to playing with great technique, being able to uh, uh, know where our help is, be able to adjust and move around pre-snap. You know, obviously uh, the game is, is they're very talented at the wide receiver group. The game always starts regardless is up front, you know, so we've got to do a great job up front, um, handling the run game and, and some of the different things that they're doing this year opposed to what they did last year. AJ Jacobson, Rivals. Coach, you know, it's talking about the USC passing game. You know, not only do they have a lot of great wide receivers, but also they like to go deep a lot. Uh, they're averaging like seven deep shots over 20 yards per game. So how do you keep them underneath you and then also contain all that underneath stuff? Kind of a tough combination. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's got to be a good balance, you know, of how you're playing on the perimeter, how you're playing inside. Um, the types of coverages you're playing, it's got to be a, there's got to be a balance, you know, and, and they're talented in terms of inefficient going deep, like you said, and obviously the underneath pass game, their efficiency is pretty high as well. So it's got to be a balance of what we're doing on defense. Matt Preen, 247 Sports. Yeah, Andy, you guys were preparing for Colorado originally, who's a vastly different team than, than USC. I, I guess just were you preparing for both and how were you handling the uncertainty of who you were preparing for? Cause they're totally different teams. Yes, no question. Matt, we, we, uh, you know, through the course of last week, we were, we were starting to work on both and obviously we were focused on Colorado and, and we we're going, uh, you know, full speed ahead on that, but behind the scenes, there were some late hours work obviously to do some prep in the event that this situation arose. And, and here we are now. And um, the coaches did a tremendous job yesterday, transitioning and, and getting ourselves ready to practice last night. And the players did an unbelievable job handling the situation. Um, it's been, you know, throw it in line with everything else this year. There's challenges that, that pop up and it's all about how you respond, you know, how you direct your emotions and your focus. And the guys did an unbelievable job of that last night. You know, obviously the coach is putting it together. And so we got we to gotta continue on with that. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. Andy, how would you describe the range of emotions for your players from having their rivalry game with Washington canceled to getting yeah. ready for Colorado and then the opportunity all of a sudden to, you know, play for the Pac-12 championship? Yeah, we've been through a few game plans here in the last week that uh, we didn't get to use. And, you know, um, I think they were very excited when when uh, this opportunity arose. I know they were very excited. Um, you can see the urgency in them. Um, and again, how they responded and yesterday and transitioning and coming back, um, you know, the, the way they worked last night was was pretty impressive, the attention to detail. And so that's got to continue on. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Andy, you guys did a good job last year against Keaton Slovis. I think the most interceptions he's thrown to date. Where have you seen the most growth since then? Obviously, this year has been really, really solid for them. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, it, <clears throat> As the games go on, he gets really comfortable in the games. Obviously, they've had some come from behind um, wins or some uh, last quarter wins there. And, and so uh, as the games go on and he, he sees what defenses are doing, he's able to adjust, adjust and adapt and obviously um, the coaching staff as well. And so you can see the growth there that tells us that he is, you know, he feels much more comfortable with the offense, how to operate it based off of what defenses are giving him. Kevin Wade, 247 Sports. With signing day tomorrow, no, you can't talk about the prospect, prospects, mm -hmm. but what has the year been like for you guys having to recruit in this unprecedented year and just as a staff working through the process? Unique. You know, that you got to find different ways. You got to adapt. You got to adjust. Um, and, you know, we're, we're extremely excited about the class that we are putting together and the, and the, the young men that will, will be joining this program um, shortly. Um, it's quite frankly been a long process being that we've, had to do it in unique ways. Um, but, you know, as always, uh, the days are long, the weeks are long, but next thing you know, you start stacking up months and here we are on the eve of uh, signing day. And so we're extremely excited about these families, these young men that will be joining uh, Oregon. James. We talk about the receiving core or, or their pension for explosiveness, Andy. 
you guys each of the last two years have kept the lid on the coverage really well. Um, and even this year without a, a Javon or a Thomas or Brady, who has been most key to that success this season for you guys where you're keeping the lid on the coverage again, really, really well. Well, you know, we, we want to make offenses uh, earn it and go down the field. Um, and, and obviously that starts with understanding where our help is and, and on the outside, you know, the corners understanding where their help is, um, what type of leverage they have. Obviously, uh, you know, a guy in the middle of the field that has done a tremendous job is Verone. Um, Verone has been unbelievable for us this year and, and obviously we'll need him to continue to be so. And not only in terms of his play, but his leadership and um, how he handles the pre-snap, how he operates as a quarterback back there. Warren Williamson, Oregon Football News. Andy, you mentioned the comebacks that, <clears throat> that USC has done this year. I think they've come back in each of their five games. Teams just haven't been able to put them away in the fourth quarter. I'm sure that's been kind of a, a mention point in your meetings. What, what do you do, I guess, late in those games to, to stop those comebacks? Well, you know what? I mean, that's kind of been ironic for, you know, we've been in a lot of those situations as well. And it's kind of come down to this this year. Um, and we've spoken about it as a program. Everybody's on a pretty level playing field in terms of everything that everybody's got to go through. Everyone has all the same issues that, that everyone's dealing with, whether it be um, the amount of players, the uh, practice time, the adjustments to how you practice and all those things. So. Um, it comes down to really, you know, how you, how you focus through the course of the week, how you focus through the course of a game, and how you're able to finish more importantly. And we've done that at times, and we've obviously not have done that at times. And so um, how we create a plan to finish and how we execute that plan, not just obviously during the course of the week is the most important part. Um, each practice day, it's important that we, we have a, a focus on our finish and how we finish practice. And as we always say, what we do in practice will lead into the games. Eric. Andy, along those lines, you guys have now had kind of an extended time between game to game, mm -hmm. an extra week. Have you seen the progress you were looking at? I know you mentioned before with tackling and some of those fundamentals. Have you seen that progress? We hope that, you know, we're, we're going to continue on with it, Eric. Like, like we said, we saw the progress in the last game we played in, in the last two weeks have been our best two weeks of practice by far this year. And that's the exciting part. Um, you know, obviously things have not gone well. Um, we haven't met our goal in the last couple of weeks, um, or excuse me, the last two outings, but the way the guys have responded and practiced and their attention to detail has gone through the roof, their care factor on the things that we need to improve on. We can't ask for anything more than what they've done at practice in terms of, uh, again, their attention to detail in those areas. James. We talked earlier in the season about the dime package, Andy, and I know you've employed it still here and there, but this is obviously such a different offense compared to even Cal or Oregon State and schematically. How much of the implementation of that this offseason wasn't just to address the, the weakness of last year, but for this kind of offense, for an air raid style against a very deep receiving core where you need more defensive backs on the field in base, let alone in third and long. Yeah, there's no question. Um, you know, the challenges of running it this year, obviously, is, is the availability to players, you know, and, and who's healthy and, and, and things like that. So that continues, you know, to be a work in progress in that way. But we're, you know, uh, the things that we've able to, been able to uh, implement and do out of that package this year, you know, we're excited about. And obviously, uh, you know, given the right circumstances and being able to grow forward in that package is, is a big to do for us. Max Torres hooped up. Andy, we talked about uh, signing day obviously coming up here tomorrow. Uh, you guys go up against USC quite a bit on, in that regard. But, um, you know, Oregon and USC have kind of developed into the premier programs in the Pac-12. What, what does this matchup kind of carry for you? Well, you know, um, they've got a lot of tradition, obviously. And uh, um, recruiting-wise, on the field, I mean, up and down the Pac-12, we all battle, um, whether it be in recruiting, whether it be on the field. Um, so as always, it's, it's a treme tremendous opportunity, number one, to, to have the chance to be in this game and to be able to compete, you know, for the Pac-12 championship. And then obviously, as we've spoken about, with it being the eve of, of uh, signing day, um, you know, there, there presents a lot of challenges. And, you know, all, although it is a very exciting time as well, you know, and so for us and for me, you know, for the players and for this program, it's an exciting time. Thank you, Coach Avalos. That's all we have for you today. Thank you, guys.